Okay, thanks for coming to listen to me. I'll try not to uh, do the butterfly with my hands. The content of my talk is going to be who I am. It's going to talk about some early games, um, some games in school, a little bit of books, arcades and Silicon Valley games, a uh, little bit of politics. I'm a libertarian. Uh, some 90s games, some family games, some online multiplayer games, current games. That's the game part. There's also going to be blogs and media. So the end of history, uh, since um, uh, Francis Fukuyama wrote the book in 1992 uh, at the end of uh, the uh, Berlin Wall, which is partly why I'm here also. Uh, blogger, how I've written some blogs in Blogger, using the Wayback Machine to get my dead Motime blog back a little bit, the fall of the Berlin Wall I mentioned. Uh, some of my blo favorite bloggers, uh, Neo Neocon and uh, Ask Blog of Arnold Kling, other book uh, marks I make, a little bit of Facebook where I have a love-hate <laughs> relationship, some Twitter and Trump, where I have a love and a disagreement relationship, a tiny bit of WordPress at the very end. <laughs> Who I am. I'm an American. I'm a libertarian. That's mostly free market and uh, freedom oriented, freedom with responsibility. You know, there's two kinds of freedom. There's adult freedom and child freedom. The child freedom is freedom from responsibility, so that if they make a mistake, someone else pays for it. Adult freedom is the freedom to act. But along with the freedom to act goes the freedom of uh, the uh, responsibility to pay for the consequences. And what almost everybody wants is that adult freedom to act with the childish freedom of responsibility. So if there's a mistake, they want someone else to pay for it. I've been working in IT. I'm a finance expert, a game player, uh, and technologically very savvy, but uh, I'm getting tired of learning new updates all the time, every six months, every three months, language after language. How did I get to Slovakia? I flew. Well, you know, that's, well, that's the usual. I'll have to start talking louder. Now, I should also mention that uh, they say you should take five minutes or so, so. Five minutes or so, show. Five minutes or so per slide. Well, I've got over 100 slides. That's going to be 500 minutes. No, I have to start speeding up, and it's about 10 seconds a slide once I start uh, moving. A uh, little bit of economics transition. I came to Slovakia with my own Everex 386 uh, laptop notebook, um, six kilo machine. It was kind of unique at the time, but I don't have a picture of it anymore. So I'm going to start with card games. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about Rummy, Solitaire, Pinochle, Spades, Hearts, and Poker. Rummy is very much like the Slovak game Joliet, and uh, I played Joliet with Jokers. And it's uh, the basic uh, game. You try to create a trick, and you play it, and you score the most points and wins. Solitaire, most of you have played it. It's also available on the computer. My mother loved this game, and she would play it every night. In fact, the night before she died, she was at home. She was playing Solitaire. She went to bed, and she didn't wake up. Uh, that was uh, oh, 14 years ago. I went to America for her funeral. It was sad, but it was also nice to see my family. Pinochle is a very strange game. Pinochle refers to a queen of spades, and a jack of diamonds. Uh, that's a pinochle. Uh, it's played with the high cards, and the suit goes in order ace, ten, king, queen, jack. So uh, it's a strange game, but I liked it. And I played a lot of it when I was in junior high school. Spades, I still play spades. And spades has the advantage of you have to choose how many tricks you're going to win, and then you play tricks to get those, and spades is always trump. So you can see here, uh, south uh, is bidding two, and it's got three trumps, king, queen, jack, and it's got this king of, uh, of clubs. It doesn't know if the king of clubs is going to be a winner, and probably won't because the ace of clubs will be higher than it, 
or uh, it might be trumped by someone who doesn't have any clubs. Uh, so he's got two definite winners between king, queen, and jack, and he could even get three. Spades uh, punishes you minus 10 points uh, times the number you bid if you miss it, but if you get over, so if he does get three tricks, he'll get 21 points, and you usually pay, play up to 200 or so. My daughter likes spades. My wife doesn't like it so much. She doesn't like card games. I like card games. I like hearts. Um, hearts is a very different kind of card game. The idea is to not get points. And the way to avoid getting points is to uh, avoid suits, uh, high cards of suits. And it has the advantage and disadvantage of, tra of trading. You trade three cards. You pass three cards to the left, then pass three cards to the right, and pass across. And then you keep, according to the rounds of hands. Uh, it also has a strange scoring system where every heart that you get on your tricks is one point, which is negative, it, and the queen of spades is 13 points. Um, so it's very negative. And there's also another interesting thing. If you get all 13 hearts plus the queen of spades, you get 26 points, except that you don't get that. Everybody else gets it. So this is called going for it all or shooting the moon. and uh, that's what makes hearts really, really interesting because most of the time you're trying to avoid, so everyone else is thinking, oh, they're doing great, they're getting no hearts, but you're taking them all, so you take them all, and then they all get 26. It's great fun. Then there's poker. Uh, here's a list of poker rankings. If you don't know, straight, flush, four of a kind, full house, flush, straight, three of a kind, two pair, one pair, and I card. And the pots get big when two people think that they're both going to win. Or when one person is bluffing and the other person thinks he's going to win. Or one person is bluffing and the other person thinks he's bluffing, but isn't sure who's going to win. Chess, board games. I played lots of board games when I was young. Uh, I like chess. One of the interesting things as I'm looking for these images on the internet is that many of them are advertising images. If you look at this uh, board game, beautiful Staunton pieces, by the way, uh, it has black in front. Uh, sort of closer to you, and white on the other side. Most of them are the other way. If you try to look at the pieces, you'll see, this is strange. Black has made four moves, and white has only made three moves, uh, because white is supposed to go first. So this was not really a game. This is just advertising. Monopoly uh, is another great game that I like. Uh, and I used to know all the rents and all the properties, and you, how you start out with the money, you know, five ones, five fives, five tens, six twenties, two fifties, two hundreds, and two five hundreds. That's fifteen hundred uh, bucks. And if you land with a four in income tax, you pay the 10%, which is 150, instead of the uh, 200. But as you start getting more money, it's 200 more often. My wife doesn't like Monopoly either that well because my daughter, when we were playing it, if she, my daughter would get upset, she would give all her money and all her property to somebody else, and that would very much disturb the game. Another two-person game that I like is Stratego. And again, this is just for advertising purposes. No one is going to put their flag uh, out here near the front so that it can be easily taken. Because when your flag is taken by the other team, you lose. So almost always you want your flag in the back, uh, either disguised or protected by bombs. Now, they do have this guy protected by a few bombs, but you don't put the bombs in front. You put the bombs in back. But Stratego is a fun game. A really fun game is Risk. Now, when I was growing up, uh, I had a box very much like this. Uh, kind of funky. And if you look at this, these are little wooden squares. And there used to be also little wooden oblong pieces for 10. Uh, each of these is one army. The newer risks, like my, the one my sister has, and when I was visiting my sister this uh, year, she won a risk game and she was really happy. They take about four or five hours. It's not so quick. Um, and she has kind of cool little pieces. Uh, that look like um, uh, armies or cannons or cavalry. And you have three dice if you're attacking, 
uh, and two dice if you're defending, or less. It might be if you only have one guy left, you only get one die. So it's a very interesting, uh, lots of die rolling. You're three dice against the other guy's two dice if you're attacking, and it's your highest dice against their highest die. And so if you have a six and a one and a one, and they have a five and a two, your six beats their five, but their two beats your one. So you lose one and they lose one. So you're attacking, you have lots of stuff, and you slowly take over the world. It's a lot of fun. Another game that I used to play quite a bit uh, is 3D tic-tac-toe. I don't know how well you can see it, but in this case, uh, there were four levels of uh, clear plastic, and uh, each level had a four by four, so it was 16 squares. So um, it was uh, 48 possibilities, and you try to get four in a row, uh, up, down, across, or on sort of uh, a tic-tac-toe, but for four. And that was very fun. A similar game is score four. And you can see right away, again, this is the stupid advertising. They don't even have some of the uh, posts. <laughs> so they're supposed to alternate. But the thing about score four, there's two ways of playing that, that we used to play. One is the first one that gets four in a row wins. But you can see here, the ice, uh, uh, white has four in a row here, so should win. But you can also see uh, black has three in a row and only needs one more on top, but also over there has three in a row and only needs one more on top. So <laughs> it looks kind of nice. I'm sure somebody in marketing was looking at it and say, this is a nice looking image. There's, I think there's 16 black and only 12 white. So it was also nice, but it's nicely balanced. Anyway, score four. Another game, if you like graphs and things, is Go. Now, Go is a 19 by 19 uh, uh, grid. And there was talk about how Go is harder for computers to play than chess. And that was true uh, up until the uh, massive ability of uh, throwing first more hardware at the problem and second smarter software. So they have better artificial intelligence looking at patterns. Also, when you play Go, the way I was taught, you can see very nicely here uh, the uh, little black and white uh, pieces. You're supposed to pick them up with your two fingers like this and put them on the board. But I think most people don't do that. Uh, and you also are supposed to use chopsticks when you're eating because it's a Japanese game. <laughs> Battleship. Uh, you can buy Battleship and play Battleship, but I would always play, almost always, play Battleship just on graph paper. You make graph paper, you play a Battleship, you put uh, different size ships, five uh, for an aircraft carrier, uh, four four for battleship, three for a cruiser, three for a submarine, two for a destroyer. You put them on the grid somewhere, and you guess where the other guy has his, and he sinks your battleship. Dots. Dots can start out as just uh, um, four by four dots, or usually on graph paper, five by five, 10 by 10, and you make uh, the lines, uh, and then the other guy makes the lines, and you keep making a line until you start making boxes. And then you count up the boxes, and the number of boxes, you get wins. In this game, uh, that you, which was me, I'm about to lose, because I made a box here, I'll make another box there, and then I have to put a line. And as soon as I put a line here or there, or anywhere, uh, he'll get all the other boxes. I hadn't played this before. Uh, on the computer. So it was the first time I saw this as I'm looking for this, because this was something I used to play when I was in elementary school, and it's fun. Another fun graph paper game is five in a row. And you, as you s could guess, you try to get five in a row, like tic-tac-toe. Uh, to get five in a row, typically you need two cases of four in a row without being blocked, uh, so that uh, you're trying to get lots of threes in a row that will intersect so that you can get some twos in a, two times four in a row. You can see here, you can also play it on a Go board, uh, which is kind of fun. And uh, nobody is winning here. This is actually looking like it could have been a real game. Pinball. Uh, you know, this is 
a walk through my childhood, and I used to love pinball. I used to go to bowling alleys uh, to uh, play pinball. Also, when I was going to bowling alleys, they didn't have automatic scores. So if you were playing uh, bowling, you had to score it yourself. Uh, if there were leagues, and there were lots of bowling leagues, they had to score it themselves. Now most people who bowl, uh, when they're bowling in the league, one of the nice things about bowling is you can be uh, a little bit tipsy and still bowl. In fact, you can be barely walking and still bowl. <laughs> but <laughs> But you can't keep score when you're barely walking. So I would keep score for these guys and because uh, I knew how to keep score. And it's a little bit complicated bowling, you know. If you get a spare, it's 10 plus what you get on the next uh, 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 roll. Uh, if you get a strike, it's uh, 10 plus what you get on the next two. And if that's uh, a stri uh, another strike, then it's 20 plus the next one. But if it's a spare, then it's 20 directly. Plus you have to add each one. Uh, so, you know, you get eight in the first frame, and then you get a spare in the second frame, and then in the third frame you get another eight, So, but you got it by uh, eight in one ball, so that's uh, uh, tw um, 18 plus eight uh, is 26, and then another eight is 34, so you got to keep that score. That was in the bowling alley. Pinball was much more easy and fun. You put the quarter in, uh, in the slot over here, and you have the flippers, and you pound it, and you tilt, and you really get upset then. <laughs> Finally, moving towards arcade games, the first one was computer space. And this was a, a this is what the arcade machine looked like. And there was a little guy. I had visions of having little animations here, but the animations take too long. So you're not going to get animations, I'm sorry. Uh, but one of the things about computer space is you don't have the TIE fighter uh, moving quickly in the air because in space, uh, nothing stops your momentum except your own thrust. So you have to turn, thrust against the way you're moving, and slow down, and then start going another way. Or you can turn, but your momentum is really a big thing. And these early games were very interested in getting the mathematics right. So that was most of my high school, junior high. Uh, some important books, Lord of the Rings, a beautiful, wonderful fantasy. I read it a few times. Uh, it led to Dungeons and Dragons and adventure games. Moon is a Harsh Mistress, Libertarian Politics. Another way of getting to Libertarian Politics is Atlas Shrugged and Ayn Rand. But, and I read those too, but that's not how I got to Libertarianism. Ender's Game was a, f a fun book, a but also had a very small, interesting side story where Ender's older brother and older sister were uh, having conversations on the World Wide Net. And this is before there was the internet. And they were shaping uh, public opinion. Uh, I read lots of science fiction and fantasy. Here in Slovakia, you find out very little science fiction in, in Slovak. It's in Czech. And I don't... Uh, lots of Slovaks don't know that because they grow up listening to Czech on their um, uh, uh, TV programs and reading Czech books uh, in, in classes. Czech people know that because they don't look, listen to Slovak stuff. And so lots of Czech adults have difficulty understanding Slovaks. And uh, Harry Potter. I read all 14 Harry Potter books, and only seven were written. Uh, how did I do that? Well, I read them in English and I read them in Slovak. But it helped my Slovak. <laughs> uh, now I'm getting into college, and finally some uh, games. Uh, one of the games was Star Trek. Now, the games in Star Trek uh, and college were actually, I, I say it's here, but they were actually written on paper like this, uh, which I found up in the back. Uh, and the paper came out printed like this, uh, where it would say, here is the Starship Enterprise. Here are Klingons. You have some uh, shields you can put up. You have photons you can use against the Klingons. Uh, and uh, you try to kill them. And you say what's happening. And you get a command. And there's a list of commands. But it was uh, typed out on paper. In fact, 
it was typed out on a machine kind of like this, which was really kind of loud. Da -da 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 uh but it was kind of fun. Uh we get them up and we type on the keyboard. Not only um Star Trek, but also Lunar Lander. Uh, this was a old form Lunar Lander where you have the feet, your speed and fuel, and you're supposed to be giving the fuel to slow yourself down. You can see he's not doing it. He's not using up any fuel, and he's not slowing down. In fact, he's getting faster. So he touches down, but he doesn't quite touch down. He crashes. <laughs> he blew it. Appropriate condolences will be sent to your next of kin. Later on, Lunar Lander uh, allowed you to uh, control on a screen with vector graphics, and that was also quite fun. Adventure was a game I spent a good amount of time in. Uh, one uh, Christmas when I was at Stanford, uh, Welcome to Adventure. You're standing at uh, the end of a road before a small brick building. Around you is a forest. A small stream flows out of the building and down a gully. So this is the beginning of adventure in your mind. Uh, you type, go south, go north, or just north or south, and you go somewhere and you find some other description. And you find a, a grate, you get into a colossal cave, which was actually uh, based on a real cave uh, by this guy, Will Crowther. Uh, but most of the adventure games in the U.S. colleges were uh, revised uh, by Crowther's uh, first pass by a guy named Don Woods, who I met and we'll get to later. Oh, and we're here on, these are text games, uh, so there's not really graphics on the mainframes. Uh, you could also play Monopoly. Uh, this is kind of hard to see that it's Monopoly, but because it's a text game. It's basic uh, attempts at uh, graphics of the different properties, and you can quickly play it. This is not a text game, uh, and you'll find out that a lot of my games are not text games or computer games. This is diplomacy, and it's a no-luck game. Everything that happens in diplomacy happens because people order it, or they don't order it, or they misorder it, or they forget to order it. So uh, if you have a piece in Vienna, and Russia, and you're Austria, and Russia has a piece in Warsaw, and you order your piece to Galicia, and he orders his piece to Galicia, they bounce. So then nothing happens. So what do you have to do? Well, you have to take your piece that's in Budapest and support your piece in Vienna going to Galicia so that you get two against one, and then you move. But of course, if he thinks that you're doing that, maybe he's going to go somewhere else, uh, maybe come down here. Uh, and so it's a very interesting, simple game. Uh, the mechanics are simple, but what it is is you as Austria talking to Germany about how you two should go against Russia. But then you talk with Russia and you say, you and Russia should go against Germany. Or maybe you and Russia should go against Turkey. Or maybe you talk with Turkey and say, the two of us should go against Italy. And then there's Italy and France and England. Uh, it's a, it's a fun game, take over uh, Europe, but no luck involved. Uh, you have to get them to order, it's turn-based, everyone writes orders, same time. Uh, the written orders are read and the results are shown. Very often that's one of the results that you feel, you get stabbed in the back. That was a lot of fun. I've never met a woman who really likes playing this much. <laughs> and. Uh, when I was going to war game conventions in Silicon Valley, not too many women uh, were even interested in playing. Getting back into the arcades, starting with Pong. And uh, Pong is like ping pong with a nice little boop, 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 back and forth. And this is what the consoles looked like, and this is what it looked like when you were actually playing. And I liked Plong a little bit, not so much, but I preferred Atari Breakout. Uh, and it was more fun and more colorful. But the game I really liked at the time, 
uh, which was the breakout game, was Space Invaders. A little bit like Jaws. And it was fun, and it was getting louder and louder and faster and faster as you're killing these uh, uh, aliens that are coming down and moving and shooting also at you and a little alien up there. Another arcade game that was fun was Defender and Joust. The reason I mentioned Joust is because Ready uh, Player One was a movie that came out recently. It was a fun movie and it helped inspire this talk because I thought, well, the guy who wrote Ready Player One played all these games. I played a lot of games. Uh, so that's why I'm talking about it. Uh, Joust was more important in the book, which I read, of course, than the movie, which uh, after people, most people who see the movie, they don't need to read the book. I'm not like that. But And another game that I played a little bit but was more important in the movie was uh, Galaxian. Uh, the huge, huge winning uh, arcade game that caused uh, hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue to the arcade industry after Space Invaders was Pac-Man. And lots of women liked to play Pac-Man. And they didn't seem to have a big preference for Miss Pac-Man, but they did like it. Then there was Donkey Kong. And then there's Silicon Valley games. Now, back to text. Uh, there's covered up here, but your little guy is rogue, and in these boxes there'll be some villains, and you go and kill them. That was rogue. I like that. It was fun. But you can see here list of your inventory. Uh, then there were the uh, early personal computers, which were game playing machines like this Atari. And I had a friend who had an Atari, and one of the things about the Atari is hooking up four joysticks to it. So this game, Dandy, which was not a very well-known game, it has one player mode. You can have four players in it, and then you have four guys here that are shooting the heck out of these guys. And you go down levels, uh, A, B, C, D, E. We got to about Q, but we were having a fun time drinking, too. Uh, <laughs> So we had a ton of fun, and there's four of us with the joysticks just blazing away. Uh, the, that was my friend who had an Atari. I had a Commodore 64, which looked a bit like this, and this was one of the games, Archon, uh, which is a little bit different because it's a chess-type game, but with different characters. And when two characters meet, there's a uh, not an automatic win. You go into uh, a little battle area and you fight it out like a little arcade game. But the um, uh, appropriate stronger piece, so uh, sorry, uh, would typically win, but not always. And like I said, I had a Commodore 64, so I did play uh, Load Runner. I did play uh, Ford Apocalypse. And I did play Excalibur. And Excalibur was a um, fantasy takeover England game where you have to do uh, different um, uh, diplomacy with the other people, and you have different uh, wealth and taxes and army, and you have gifts and honor and ways of uh, getting with other people. Phoenix. I'm not going to go into Phoenix. It's a very complex uh, game. Uh, the rules are 94 pages long. I really liked it. Um, <laughs> it would be uh, diplomacy, take over the galaxy, <laughs> and you have factions, you have alliances, you have battles. It was a lot of fun. It took up a huge amount of my time, uh, far more than it's worth. Uh, Tetris was another game, very fun, taking up a good amount of time. I mention it because the 3D Tetris uh, was not so much fun to me, but this guy, Andrei Snegov, he was a friend of the he was the Russian friend of the guy who did Tetris, and he was one of the key programmers of 3D Tetris. So when I came to Slovakia in 1991, before I came to Slovakia, I had a three-month uh, Uriel pass in Europe. So I spent a week and a half uh, in Moscow at Andrei Snegov's house uh, in an 18-story uh, panelak. Uh, uh, some of which have been falling down. And they had uh, rats in their um, uh, chutes, 
uh, where you put the garbage in and it goes down. It, it, they had beautiful subways, though, uh, at the time. I was kind of surprised. Ultimate Frisbee. I played Ultimate Frisbee in Silicon Valley. Uh, I urge all of you to play Ultimate Frisbee. Uh, it's a fun game. Uh, it's also, I think, the best game for men and women to play together uh, in terms of physically, uh, in kind of a, 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 a no-contact, fair way. And you can see uh, there's a lot of mixed teams in, uh, in Ultimate Frisbee. We're at the point where another game, Game of Thrones, well, it's politics. I ran uh, as a libertarian candidate in California a couple of times because I'm very uh, politically, I was very politically oriented. Then I came to Slovakia as an advisor to Jan Czarnogorski uh, because um, this guy, uh, Tim Evans, uh, was um, paid by or funded by the Adam Smith Institute in the UK to be Jan Czarnogorski's uh, advisor when he was a vice prime minister. But at that time, 1991, uh, Mechiar, uh, you have to tell me when I have 10 minutes, five minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, so, this is his wedding, uh, 10 years later, and uh, most of these people uh, I, I met here in Slovakia uh, because of this issue, and I focused on privatization. Minesweeper, that was a game. Castle Wolfenstein, another game. <laughs> <laughs> this was a good game. This was the uh, uh, first-person shooter. I'm not big on first-person shooters, but this, this was a really good game. Sid Meier's Civilization, that's a great game. I'm big on this kind of game. In this case, uh, American Civilization Destroyed by Indians. Uh, next big game that I loved, Age of Empires. Uh, and... Sorry? Uh, it's coming. Uh, mental disorders. Here in Slovakia, there's actually lots of good uh, ultimate uh, disc players now. And uh, when I was here, I was among the people who were helping found that. And so I'm glad that that's happening. Here's why I'm staying. My beautiful wife and I love dancing, and she wants to stay here. Secret for marriage. Do the things that are easy for you that your wife likes. So, you know, make her happy. Do, there's 10 things, five of them are easy. Do those five things. Argue about the other ones, but if it's easy for you, do them. It's easy for me to stay. I can live anywhere. I'm pretty flexible. I have uh, four kids, and here they are. But this is uh, 12 years ago when Michael uh, and Daniel uh, were still uh, young and just starting to play uh, age of Mythology. Uh, daughter Bianca, this was at Dell uh, in one of their uh, Mikulaj uh, things. And that was for those three. Uh, I was the year before, or the summer before, I was with my son Patrick uh, at the beach. So, uh, Titan, I'm going to skip Titan because we don't have time, but you can play Titan by email and you can play Titan on a uh, uh, computer and it's a great game. Don Woods and Tom Lehman uh, are two people who were involved in uh, game playing in um, Silicon Valley. Other games, Settlers of Catan, Labyrinth, Carcassonne, here's Age of Mythology. Uh, and we still play that. And the reason we still play it, it it's still working. Or we, we play it through Vubli. Uh, so multiple people and my son, who's uh, studying in Brno, can play it uh, with us. Uh, so online games, uh, Age of Empires online. This is a copy of the original and the remaster. But we don't play Age of uh, Empires so much. We play Age of Mythology more. Uh, some of us play Warcraft, or especially World of Warcraft. All these games, RuneScape, my wife likes RuneScape okay. Uh, so she played that a lot. Uh, her, her name was Ivanka. She was an um, 80 level warrior, and she was uh, having guys uh, who were like 20 
uh, say, you know, she can't be a woman. Uh, <laughs> but she can be. Uh, Harry Potter, well, there was a Harry Potter times, and uh, there were Harry Potter games, and they were kind of fun. Rayman was kind of fun. We had a Rayman 1, 2, and 3. Isn't this kind of fun? If you've played any of these games, it's a walk down memory lane, civilizations 3, 4, 5, and 6, <laughs> uh, with increasingly better graphics. Uh, Portal, that was kind of a cute game. The cake is a lie. That's <laughs> Uh, my my uh, second son, Daniel, really likes lots of games, but he's especially wonderful in Dominion. He likes all the expansions, and he plays it. Race for a Galaxy, um, maybe some of you have played that here. This was written by this guy, Tom Lehman. That was the guy back at Stanford that I met, who was a friend of Don Woods, who did the adventure games. And we would all play uh, New Year's Eve, uh, at Don's house uh, for, uh, for three days uh, <laughs> on, the, on the weekend, starting Friday night until people poop out or have to go back to work on Monday. Uh, we still play uh, the expansion set because you can play up to six uh, with the expansion sets of Settlers. The original Settlers before was maximum. And finally, League of Legends. Uh, I like to play a Moomoo. I'm actually... Uh, all my, all my, uh, my, my two sons and my daughter play uh, League of Legends, and they're better than I am. Uh, but I really like Dr. Mundo. Uh, okay, that was, that was the fun games. Now we get to the content. It's probably end instapundent. I'm just going to zip through these. Um, it is a blog that I read, and they typically have a very short. Uh, piece of news, sometimes a little bit so you can decide whether you want to click on it and get more details. Uh, some of my blogs, I wrote one uh, that was going to be for my family, which I, I stopped writing most of these blogs. Uh, but there quickly, Hayek in Slovakia was going to be economics, Weblog ABCs was going to be about weblogs, software projects was going to be about software projects. <laughs> <laughs> World Association of International Studies was actually this long email that I was getting from this guy, Ronald Hilton, from Stanford. Very interesting stuff. But once uh, it's uh, not on the, on the web, you know, there's the talk about Google, uh, it, it, you can't find it. So I was making a blog, and I was copying his letter into uh, this blog so that it could be found. Uh, then I started blogging more on... Uh, Motime, Motime is now dead, uh, so it's gone. You can find a little bit of this stuff through uh, the Wayback Machine, uh, where there's three billion, 300 billion uh, web pages stored. So I looked up mine. Uh, and I could go through more. Neo Neocon, uh, Ask Blog is more economics. Comments are what makes a really good blog. So this is a comment that I wrote on uh, the Ask blog, uh, economic issue. PJ Media, you can have blogs in uh, a, a PDA form, low graphics, but I don't like that so much, even though it's better for smartphones. You can have it with the RSS feed, but I don't like those. And you can have monetization, uh, which uh, I also don't use yet. <laughs> or <laughs> PJ Media. That uh, was Pajamas Media. Um, that's the PJ. Uh, Facebook, my love-hate relationship with Facebook. Here's my wife. Uh, this is our, our Christmas picture last year. This was a, a picture uh, 12 years ago uh, or 10 years ago. So family, uh, what's on my mind? You know, it says what's on my mind, but uh, I just don't like Facebook that much. But it's kind of like blogging. So I'm going to be doing it more. Oh, and you see, there's uh, not uh, six of us, but there's seven us of us. That's because Victoria Gray is uh, my oldest son Michael's uh, wife. Uh, so when she wrote Victoria Gray, I was wondering, who is that person? Because I knew her as Vicky. <laughs> it's like, OK. One of the things is they do have uh, 
Age of Mythology uh, group for, the, for our family to play. Uh, swipe, uh, they have League of Legends. Trump on Twitter, I don't, I was uh, suspended from Twitter for retweeting something of Trump. I had made zero tweets, but I was suspended for four months. They've recently non-suspended me, but I'm not going to be using it, except to watch what uh, Trump says. And this is another guy who's very pro-Trump uh, and is kind of a jerk about it almost. Uh, these guys, uh, power line, uh, two guys are pretty fair, and one guy is kind of anti-Trump, but a pretty reasonable anti-Trump. And finally, WordPress. Uh, I have a WordPress blog and comparing blacks to blacks. Is that it? Yes. Okay. I have other slides that could go on and on and on. <laughs> <laughs> I won't even mention it. But okay, let's get to the end. Future design. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.